I have been drawing ever since I could grasp a pencil. Of course, back then it was nothing more than scribbles of scrabbly nonsense. Regardless of the horrid sketches I created, my parents did their best to support me and my hobby. Although, my education suffered greatly as I dedicated far more of my time towards my artistic endeavors instead of academic pursuits. And due to that, while my friends had their electronics taken away from them when they were disciplined, I, on the other hand, had my utensils and my seemingly never-ending supply of paper taken from me. At times, I felt like my hobby had become some sort of addiction, but it worked out in the end. I now work as a sketchboard artist for an animation company that produces anime. I basically just follow the books they're based on and create rough drafts to be sent to the animators. It's a pretty sweet gig and I couldn't be happier. Although recently I think I've been overworking myself. Sometimes when I draw, I feel like something is slithering down my forearm in a serpentine motion and into my fingers, and occasionally from my shoulder to my chest once the feeling leaves my fingers. Obviously, I spend hours each day drawing for work and for my own pleasure, so it only stands to reason that my arm would be feeling restless. Casting aside the odd feelings, I decided just to toss myself into the throes of an artistic fervor and forget about them. But not more than two minutes into my sketch, some of my original characters, I noted that something was wriggling around and squirming under the skin of my right index finger. I instinctively threw my pencil down onto the wooden desk in my room and stood up. I looked back down at my hand and couldn't see or feel anything. And after inspecting it for a long while, I slowly sat back down and resumed my drawing. Nothing eventful happened for a good half hour until I felt something wrap up around and seize my heart. I clutched my chest and exhaled involuntarily and leaned forward in my chair. Whatever had a hold of my heart was progressively increasing the strength of its grip until it was about to burst. Thankfully, without warning, the pressure released and I was again able to breathe. Once I had regained my composure, I tore my shirt off and saw a mass of wriggling tentacles that had snaked their way through my ribcage. I screamed and patted and punched at the foreign invader to my body until I was sure I had bruised myself. After reeling in the pain from my heart and now battered ribcage, I examined my body again. Nothing was out of the ordinary and nothing alien appeared to be investigating my insides. I made my way to the kitchen and sloppily drank some water straight from the tap in an attempt to refresh myself and calm down. I gazed up over at the clock behind me to the entrance of the kitchen and I saw it was around 3.30 in the morning. I chuckled to myself as I turned off the faucet. Clearly my lack of sleep no days off for a month, and neglecting a proper diet had finally caught up to me. I patted the sides of my face, sighed, and nodded. I decided I would fix my life and get back on track with a more healthy lifestyle. Anything to make these delusions of something traversing my organs and viscera disappear. Sudden tiredness then overcame my senses and I felt my muscles become limp. Not wanting to spend the night on the floor, I trudged my way around my apartment locked up and turned off my desk lamp. The last thing I needed to do was turn off my bedroom light, but before I could turn around, the light turned off. The oddity of that occurrence sobered me up, that and the unsettling darkness I found myself in. Even more disconcerting was I could feel the tips of my fingers retracting into themselves. I rubbed the tips of my fingers together and it felt normal, as normal as it could be. Fearing I would hurt myself in the sleepy stupor, I made my way to my bed and plopped down and closed my eyes. Why do you disregard me? My eyes immediately opened. It was as though my internal monologue had gone rogue, as I knew for a fact I did not think those words. I could feel my heartbeat quicken and suddenly got incredibly sweaty. I sat up and started to hyperventilate. Why are you panicking? We're finally able to communicate. This should be a joyous occasion. Searing pain surged through my chest and crept and settled my sternum. It felt like thousands of sharp needles and wires were scratching and trying to poke their way through my chest. With a scream, numerous cables sprouted out from my sternum and jabbed holes into the wall across the room from me. 
and just as soon as they pierced the wall, they retracted back into my body. When I felt the location where the cables burst out, my chest was perfectly fine. There was no open wound to speak of. I can do much more than this. Fear not. All of it will be for your benefit. Now relax. I don't recall what happened after that, as I passed out once the voice in my head finished speaking. The next morning, I sat up with a start and panicked when I realized I was late for work. And then I remembered what had transpired before the blackness of sleep had taken me. I patted my chest and arm carefully to make sure that all was in order. I breathed a sigh of relief when nothing was out of place. I stood up and determined last night's events to be nothing more than something akin to a fever dream due to lack of sleep. In any case, I was late and didn't have the time to entertain whether I was insane or not. Oh, you're not insane. Quite the contrary. I looked down and saw a thin black cable that extended out from my sternum. Shrieking, I tried to grab it in a panic, but it vanished as quickly as it came. Oh, don't worry. You'll learn the value.